Globally, it's estimated that there are 24.5 million refugees in the world, and more than half of them are children, and many of those will spend their entire childhood in displacement. At the moment, we're seeing a level of displacement, disadvantage and vulnerability that we've possibly not seen for centuries in our world. The levels of displacement, the numbers of people who are refugees from their homes and their countries, is now at a quite unprecedented level. In the first six months of this year, we saw that over 10,000 children uh, tried to get into a number of European countries. And around half of those were actually unaccompanied or separated children, so they're particularly vulnerable. Young people are in great danger of being trafficked, of being lured into criminality or into prostitution. It is an appalling way for us to treat young people. This is a problem about the stability and the well-being of the world. But it's also a problem about our own self-respect, our own moral dignity, our own capacity to rise up and confront a challenge and do something about it. This is the 80th anniversary of the Kinder Transport Movement and it's a hugely important time for us in the UK to look back and to celebrate exactly what happened at that time. I, I love this, my adopted country now, with a, with a passion that perhaps only someone who had lost their human rights could feel. We look back and we think 10,000 would be wonderful. And so we argue that if Britain could do it then, Britain can do it now. These delays go on. Children grow up, they're missing education, they're not getting in here, and they're still hungry. Much more can be done, particularly in the areas of unaccompanied and separated children who are hugely vulnerable and often trying to uh, trace their families or seeking uh, support and guardianship. If it was your kid, if it was your city being bombed, your street on fire, your child separated from you, what would you want for it? How would you want the world to look after it?